I feel like a woman of the wilderness right now. Oh, there's an enormous grub. Basically, insects taste like whatever they eat. I'm Merle and I am a video producer for Goodful. I spend a lot of time making these kind of crazy vegan recipes and having my coworkers try them. And I'm Rob Greenfield, an environmental activist, and I just finished an entire year of growing and foraging 100% of my food. Today, we're gonna be making a three course meal with all ingredients that we foraged from the streets of LA. This is our family garden on the median, and all our neighbors are welcome to come and harvest from it. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> like we've actually announced it in the LA Times, so people know that this is for everyone. I think it's basically a crime for anybody in Southern California to buy rosemary at the grocery store. I'm definitely guilty of that. Then you won't be guilty after today, because look at okay. this. This is rosemary all the way to the end of there. This is a good beginner plant because you're familiar with rosemary and you had it. See how here it's a woody stem? Yeah. And then up here it's actually green, the stem. So when you harvest plants like this, you want to pick at about the green spot because then it will regenerate. If, okay. Oh, I just saw something else we can eat. <laughs> what, this? This. This is another landscaping plant. And this is a, this is a berry that I've seen everywhere. I mean, look, look at the shrub. There's berries all up it. So this is a hedge that probably 99% of Angelinos and anybody where these hedges exist walk past and never realize that it's a delicious Because well, we were told as children never to eat the berries off stray bushes. This isn't stray, this bush is our friend. It's a nice fruit. It's so pretty good. Look at the color. Oh my God, the juicy ones are nice. You know that's got some nice antioxidants in it with that color. Yep. It's nice when you're foraging to have different bags so you can keep the different ingredients separate. Should we get some sweet potatoes? Let's do it. All right, cool. You know, I can't help but notice that you're not wearing any shoes. Is that like a foraging tactic? Really for me, it just comes down to the fact that I simply believe in the design of the human body and I don't think I need shoes. And uh, I've been doing it for about like maybe eight or so years and it's working. Let's find some sweet potatoes. All right. So like there's a whole bunch coming out right here. So that's generally gonna be a nice center where there might be a good potato under it. All right, here, this looks like a good one. See this thick vine, like how much thicker it is than this thin green one? Yeah. So that's a good sign. So dig right down here. Have you ever dug up a potato? Absolutely not. All right. There's an enormous grub down here that I found. It's the juiciest grub I've ever seen. Really? Let me see if it's juicy. Oh no! No, no! Basically, insects taste like whatever they eat. Do you want to eat it? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, the, cr the crunch! That was a bad grub. <laughs> Some grubs are like, ah. Oh. It would have been better if you at least enjoyed it. I, know, that been, I usually like grubs, but that was a gross grub. Oh! That's a good one. I think I might have found the biggest one yet. Here we go, here we go. I'm glad we didn't give up. Woo! All right, Yay! we got us a potato. Oh my God. So this uh -huh. is amaranth, and I grew a lot of this in Florida. And amaranth grows wildly. The reason it grows wild all over the place is that it has a ton of seeds, so watch this. These seeds are a grain. Amaranth is a grain you can buy at the grocery store. For the sake of time, we can just grab the seed heads and pop them into this bag, and then we can separate them when we get back. So yesterday, Merle and I didn't get quite enough food to complete this meal. So I'm out this morning walking the fringes of some of the urban parks to get more greens and hopefully find some citrus. So I'm really excited to have found some nasturtium. It's really spicy and this is gonna add to the mix of greens we're making. So I'm gonna harvest a whole bunch of this. Walking on the street here, I found a really great patch of sorrel and sorrel is another great green that grows wildly and abundantly. It's actually got kind of a lemony flavor. I found a great score of lamb's quarter here, one of my favorite greens. So I'm walking down the sidewalk in a neighborhood and I found a tree with some lemon falling to the ground and this is often what you'll find is tons of fruit falling to the ground if sometimes if there's a whole bunch falling to the ground I'll just grab them right off the ground or a couple off the tree that are right on the sidewalk so I found some young tender Nepal cactus pads here 
that I'm gonna harvest. Now we're back in the kitchen. This is the game plan. For the first course, we're gonna be doing a sweet potato soup. And for the main course, or so the second course, we are going to make sauteed Nepal cactus with the sea salt that we're making. And finally, for the dessert course, we're going to be making a sorbet with some of the lemon juice from the lemons we got. I've never yeah. made a sorbet without sugar. And I've never made a sorbet. <laughs> so we're gonna start with, let's start with that. Survey. So what are we gonna do about you for salt? So this is salt water. This is Pacific Ocean water from the beach. And this is how we're gonna make our salt. Basically, we're just gonna pour this into this pan, turn the pan on, and all the water's gonna boil off. Okay. And then we'll be left with salt. Wait, that is so cool. So I don't, I live in LA. There's no reason for me to be paying for salt. Pretty much there's no reason for anyone in California to buy salt at the store. It's right there in the ocean. So let's start with the sorbet. What we're gonna do is just juice these bad boys. I got yeah. us two juicers. Cool. So you keep juicing those. In the meantime, I'm gonna start zesting from the peels that we already have. How would it be just to bite one of these things? Give it a shot. Uh, I guess I'm a little <laughs> scarred from that whole grub thing. Honestly, so am I. We're gonna blend up our sorbet. So we got about a cup of lemon juice. There's a couple of seeds in there. I have a sifter. Cool. This is lemon zest that you saw me get from our lemon. Now we need a little water. Normally with a sorbet, we might do like two cups of lemon juice and one cup and three quarters of water. But since we don't have sugar, other than the sugar and the lemon, we don't need to dilute this any more than it already is. So let's add this in. But this is pretty simple. If it turns out good, it's just lemon juice, a little water, pinch of salt and some lemon zest. Frozen. Frozen. All right, let's blend her up. <laughs> Smells really good. We're just gonna be using this flat sheet pan for the sake of time. Yeah. And also, I'm thinking possibly it could, when we scoop it out, make really beautiful, kind of like shaved ice. Mm, that'd be nice. That's the dream. That's the hope. It's a nice hope. <laughs> Thank you. So we're just gonna pop this in the freezer and then we will check on this in a little while. I think we should, to be fair, call it a shaved ice. Serve them with the berries to garnish. All right, sweet potato time. Sweet potatoes. We're gonna get our water a boiling. All right, so we've got our potatoes and we've got our rosemary. Let's just slice these up into little cubes. Do you think that foraging is something that's like accessible and possibly achievable for most people in the US? Generally, food is growing abundantly, whether it's in the cities, in the urban environments, or out in the countryside, in the woods, the lakes, the rivers, the oceans. Everywhere you go, there's food growing. So I think it's something that, you know, most people can do a little bit of. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of our salt in here, just so you're abreast of everything that's going on. Yeah. Okay, now we're rosemary? gonna add some of our rosemary. Okay. You wanna add some in? Sure, you just throw the sprigs in? I just throw them right in to Those let them well. season. You don't wanna crush it up too much because okay. we're gonna strain this. I have never cooked with cactus before, mm. so you're gonna be teaching me a thing okay. or two with this. This is nopal or prickly pear. It's edible, and the key is you just need to get rid of these spikes. I'm gonna make a goal of us not eating spikes today. That'd be nice. Which is not too hard. Basically, I cut around the edge, because that's where a lot of the spikes are, so I just kind of cut around the whole edge. Okay. To get rid of a majority of them. I cut this base, and that looks nice. You can see good yeah. color. Yeah. Let's set these aside for a second while we look, yeah. so they can boil while we're doing this. Mmm, this smells so good. I love rosemary. Okay, so let's slice these up. How do you cut these? Yeah, I just basically like do chunks like that big. Okay. Squares. Okay, so for the next step, we're gonna separate the seeds from the amaranth, which he's gonna show us a really cool way to do that. I'm shaking this to get the seeds to fall to the bottom. Okay. And then I can pretty much take this stuff right off the top, this heavy stuff. We've gotten most of the, the grain out of there. Are you gonna blow all that off? Yeah. So you ideally do this outside and definitely not over your potatoes. Do you wanna blow? Yeah. Oh my God. Maybe we should put a lid on that. <laughs> okay, Super you can do the rest. Okay. You can do that then. Okay. It's good teamwork. So this is called winnowing. Okay. I feel like I'm earning my food today for sure. This is all set to go. Yep. I think we're good on the potatoes. Yep. So we'll let those sit for a second. And this requires a three to one ratio with water. One, two, three. Maybe just a teeny bit more, just a yeah. little bit. Cool. Okay, and then I think to add to this, to add a little flavor, maybe we can add some of the sage because we foraged it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And our magical salt because it's going to make everything oh, better. Yeah. So we're going to set this to boil. I'm going to cover it up and then we're going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Okay, so we're removing the rosemary from our sweet potato and then we can just drain the rest. 
We're gonna be blending our soup together so we can get it as smooth and as creamy as possible. I know what some of you might be thinking, that's not soup, that's just water and potatoes. However, I got this method from a recipe I saw by Gordon Ramsay where he did like the most simple broccoli soup. And it's just broccoli and boiling water and the boiling water really brings out the complexity and the flavor of the vegetable. We're gonna apply that same method here, but we've got the rosemary and some salt, so we're already ahead of the game. It's soup. This is our stock, and we're gonna just add some of this to the sweet potatoes until we get it to the consistency that we want. Nice. Now it's time for us to saute. We're gonna saute up our cactus with our greens. We don't have oil, yeah. so how are we gonna saute up this cactus? So basically just in water with salt. I've cooked this enough times where I feel like one of the keys is not to overcook it. I feel like I can already see the water getting pretty slimy. <laughs> this is looking pretty wild. What if we just dump this out and see what we have? Wow, clover! That's actually sorrel. Oh. Should we take the grass out? I've come this far. I'm not turning my nose up to grass. This looks like a big old pot of greens. Yeah. Beautiful. Smells good. And then we're gonna do our sweet potato leaves too. Yeah, let's take the most tender young ones. All right, now shall we just add a little bit of water? Yeah. And then the super low heat. Yep. All of this, a lot of people would throw this in the garbage, but this is all earth. It's all what can be turned into compost. So this goes into the compost, makes good soil, and grow more food with it. When it cooks down, it just looks like any other green thing. It does. I eat in a salad. If every American just did this every day, it would change the American diet. Just because it's so nutrient dense? Yeah. It's just so much nutrients and so good for you. The greens are all done. We're going to plate everything and eat. Sounds good. Okay, we did it. We yep. made three courses. Now let's try it. Let's eat. Soup first? Yeah. Pretty good. Honestly, very impressed by the consistency of this. It's good. I fought grubs for this soup. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Me too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. Oh my god. The amaranth? really helps balance out the sliminess because mm, it's really? crunchy, mm. right? It's so good. I love it. The greens are definitely my favorite part. Me too. They're packed with the most flavor for sure. We have to high five on this one. I feel like that's very, very well done. It's a nice <laughs> plate. So this turned out to be more of a shaved ice because we didn't forage sugar, so we weren't able to get the consistency of sorbet, but I still think it's gonna be incredibly refreshing. Yeah, let's see. Whoa. Lemony. Lemony. <laughs> That's definitely a nice treat. Ooh. Oh my God, you need more berries with yours. It's so yeah, much better with the berries. berries. Considering I've never foraged in Los Angeles before, mm -hmm. I'd say we did pretty good. I'm very happy with it, honestly. Yay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the sound of you crunching on that grub is gonna haunt my dreams. Forever. One good thing to say though, at least. <laughs> I spit the grub back onto the ground. I'm cycling nutrients. <laughs> I'm surprised though. Honestly, I usually like grubs.